In one of our earlier videos, we walked through how to deploy AWS workspaces. At the end of that video, I promised a follow up to show you how to go beyond simple deployments, how to actually automate the creation of custom workspace image and bundles. The goal was to have a process similar to how Packer creates custom Amazon machine images. That's exactly what this project delivers. The process starts with some essential building blocks. We stand up a mini Active Directory environment, configure the networking security layers, and connect in everything into a workspaces registered directory. With that foundation in place, we can focus on the real goal, automating software installs and building custom bundles. The key to this automation is that we use a group policy to bootstrap and initialize our workspace. Dash Insurance is prepared for automation by registering it with a hybrid activation code with AWS Systems Manager, so we can use that to do the actual software installs. From there, we leverage pre-built and custom SSM documents to install tools like the Active Directory Utilities, Google Chrome, and Notepad++. And then comes the centerpiece, a script called SSMBuild.sh. This script orchestrates the automation that takes a running workspace, applies your software stack, and turns it into a new custom workspace bundle. The result is a repeatable, consistent, and hands-off way to manage workspace image and bundles. Instead of manual clicks and snapshots, you will have an infrastructure as code workflow for virtual desktop images, just like you do with Packer. So in this video, I'll walk you through the architecture, explain how the Terraform code is organized, and then show you how to adapt this project to do additional software installations into a workspace bundle. What we'll do is actually add and install 7-zip into our bundle and then rerun to show how that works. Okay, now let's take a look at the architecture diagram of the, what the work, workspace builder builds and provisions to actually do the build. So we're gonna do the build in US East 1. And the reason we do that is because workspaces are only supported in certain regions and even better, only in certain data centers or availability zones within that region. So we set it all up so that we're in US East 1 and that we're using the correct availability zones for workspaces. So we've got three subnets. The first subnet is in our NRVPC is the mini AD subnet. This is where we put the wbuilderworkspaces.com domain controller. And we use the mini AD because the key to this is making it as streamlined as possible. Mini AD, you can build in three minutes. It's much cheaper than the, the Amazon um, directory service. And at the end of the day, you're gonna extract out the, the, you know, the build image and the bundle and destroy all this and you use it within a production AD. So this AD is just temporary for doing the builds. So after we have that VPC, we can have two subnets for the VMs for, or for the workspaces. Now, why do we have two? Because it requires you to have two. We only need one because we're only building one at a time. And so what we have to do is we have to deploy an AD connector to our workspace. That's how workspaces can interact with it. They need an AD connector or an, uh, a directory service itself. So we use that connector that connects it to our uh, self-hosted mini AD. And at that point, we spin up an admin build workspace, which is gonna use the admin account for the AD. Outside of the VPC, you've got the admin secret. That's the AD join password, the uh, account that you can log in to test how the workspace build is going. Then we also register a hybrid activation code with SSM. We store that as a secret and pull that out at the correct place in the uh, in the GPO. And then finally, there's a series of SSM documents that exist that we're actually, the way that it's structured is we, we create them temporarily, but you can certainly build your own library of SSM documents. But the whole idea is we're using a standard SSM way of deploying software. We just activate it through workspaces through the GPO. And so that, that once we've done that, we can just use SSM as if it's any other system. So the architecture gives you what we've got built, but what I like to do is kind of go the workflow of how you actually end up generating these, these bundles and images. So we start with what we talked about before with the VPC, when we have specific requirements for the VPC, what zones they need to be in and stuff like that. And what we do is we deploy our mini AD. Mini AD takes three minutes. It's very quick and, and dirty. When we deploy that AD, we create that bootstrapping GPO that sets the activation code for the workspace image. Then we have to use our mini AD with AD connector. So we connect it with AD connector. At that point, we register it with workspaces and we create the admin um, workspace. When that workspace starts up, it's gonna join the domain. When it joins the domain, it's gonna apply the bootstrap. It's gonna apply that activation code. 
And at that point, we're off to the races. We've got the activation code. We can take the AW System Manager. We can execute uh, custom SSM uh, documents. There's a whole library out there. You can do all sorts of things. You can also, there's a script in there that we'll look at, which does a workspace reboot. So a lot of times you have an install and you do a reboot. It, it, there's, there's a script there that does that for you. It'll reboot and then wait for the system to come back online. And then all that has been done. And what we'll do is we'll then call the AWS CLI to capture the image. Now the image capture uh, from the, the bundle that we've, we've customized, this is the part that takes the longest in the entire build. It's literally like 40 to 45 minutes just for Amazon to take that image. And the reason is if you can watch the status, it actually takes the image and then it deploys it and does a unit test on the, on the workspace and then connects to it. So it's very, the image is much more than AMI. It, it takes the AMI or the equivalent of an AMI, but then it spins it up and makes sure you haven't screwed it up. Because there's a lot of ways you can screw up. Like if you saw some virus software on there, there's some things you just can't, you can't sysprep. And I've run into that before. And so it, it makes sure you haven't screwed it up, that it is valid. And at that point, it creates the bundle. The bundle creation is really, is really quick. And that bundle and image are the artifacts of the build. After that happens, you can destroy, call the destroy script, and it's going to destroy all this infrastructure, all this temporary stuff, and just leave you with those two build, build artifacts, the image and the bundle. And you can take those bundles and you can share them across accounts. You can copy them to different regions. It's very much like AMIs at that point. So that's the whole objective is to configure all this temporary infrastructure and then you get these custom image and bundles at the end that you can use in your own Active Directory. Okay, now let's talk about the prerequisites. We have a video, which I'll put up there, which is the AWS and Terraform Easy Setup. It walks you through all the steps for creating a, a build identity in the account and how to set your secret and key in a very simple scenario. So if you've never done a video before, you might want to check that out. Uh, but what you need is you need an AWS account with the secret and access key. You also need the AWS CLI. That's the little glue, the SSM build glue that we call to build the image. Then we have Terraform because we you need the latest Terraform because we're building most of the infrastructure in Terraform. And then finally, um, if you're going to interact with your workspace, which I think is what you're going to do when you're going to be debugging your SSM documents, you need to install a workspace client, give you a registration code, you can connect to your workspace, and you can work out interactively what your uh, bundles are. Now it's time to build the code. So the first thing we want to do is download this code repository. So I'll click on here, go to my development environment. I'll hit paste. All right, so in all our projects, we have a script called check ENV. So I'm going to run check ENV. And it's going to go and make sure that you have AWS install, you have Terraform install, everything that we need for the build. And then it's going to log into AWS and verify that your secret and key work. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to do the build. So I'm going to do apply. Okay, if you, if you have any questions about the build, please post a comment and I will answer it. Um, this build takes between 60 and 90 minutes. It's quite long and about 45 minutes of it is just the taking the image from the workspace image itself. Okay, the build has completed. So what we'll do is bring up the AWS console and let's take a look at what got built. So we'll start with the EC2 section. So our mini AD controller is a T3 small, so it's cheap and comes up quick. And so the most important thing about this is if you go and do actions, um, instance settings, edit user data, um, this will show you the actual boot script for our mini domain controller. And it's got a lot of stuff in here that's also part of the mini AD implementation. But the key, and the thing that's key about this, is after it creates the users and groups, it's going to create the GPO on the Linux side. And the key is this SSM bootstrap file right here. This is the key to the whole thing, where it's going to take this activation code and register that SSM instance directly with SSM so we can start running documents. So this is key right here. Okay, so that is the domain controller. So now let's go to the directory service. And in the directory service, you will see a connector. 
And if I click on the connector, this is where I have to use those additional subnets because it forces you to use two subnets. But this is the, the mini AD and the connector DNS address are, are here. So once we do that, we can go in to the workspaces. And in the workspaces, you'll see the directory that is registered is that AW, the, the connector that we've created. And then from there, if we go to the personal, you'll see you've got the instance that we did the installs on and it is available. And then the main thing out of this is in the bundles, we create the image. This is the bundle. This is the build artifact. This is the whole thing is about is this, this image here and then the bundles. And so when you go into bundles, you can uh, go to images actually, and you go in images and this is where you can share accounts or add regions. This is essentially the kind of the AMI type of sharing that you can do. So this is your build artifact. Now you can share it out to other accounts, other active directories, and you're ready to go. So the other thing that I'll show you is let's go to SSM and go to systems manager. We got our hybrid activations. That's what we use to actually activate the instance and it's registered one and, and it's already been registered. So it's, it's one and done. And then if you go to fleet manager, this is going to show you everything that's responding to SSM documents. The first one is we, we always install the active directory uh, SSM on active directory. So if you need to log in and use anything on that, you can use SSM. And then this is the hybrid activation that's tied to the AWS workspace. So that's it for the um, SSM part of it. And finally, and we'll use this in the demo is we've got the secret. So the hybrid activation we've already used, we don't need to worry about it. The admin AD credentials, that's the one, and we'll just leave it up here because we are going to use that to actually log in to the AWS workspace in the demo. Okay, for the demo, what you first want to do is you want to go back to the build output and grab your registration code. So you grab that registration code, let me copy that in here. Then you want to bring up your workspaces client. I'm using the desktop version as a web version. I usually use the desktop version. Do the change registration code. I'm going to put the registration code in there. Hit continue. And now I should be able to go in and use those admin credentials. So I'm going to put in admin and go back to secrets manager. And I've got the generated password. It's different for every build. Put that in there. Hit sign in. And the first time you log in, it may take a bit, but I logged in earlier. So you can see that we've got Google Chrome was installed and I do have Notepad++. plus plus. And so you can see um, Notepad++. Plus plus, and we're going to go to a uh, control panel. Install programs just to give you the list. There it is. You've got the uh, Notepad++. You've got uh, Chrome right there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our build environment and we're going to add uh, the popular zip program uh, 7-zip. And we're going to write a um, SSM document and run it and show you how that works. Now we're going to add 7-zip to the install. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the SSM portion of the project. And in here, there is a documents folder. So I'm going to go to CD documents. And I'm going to do a nano 7zip.json. And then I'm going to go back to our, our project. And in the demo section, there is the SSM JSON document for 7zip. I'm going to copy that. Pop that in to nano here. Save it. So I've saved the JSON file. That's the SSM document that's going to run. And so now I need to go back up and I'm going to nano SSM build SH. And so what I need, this is, gets the activation code and runs the documents against it. So what I'm going to go is I'm going to go in here and go to where we actually execute the documents. And I'm going to comment out this reboot because we've already done it and it takes five minutes and it's not great for the demo. So take that reboot out, but that's where you can reboot between steps if you need to installs that have reboots pending. So I'm going to do execute sh, 
I'm going to see M I I D, and I'm going to say 7zip.json. So that's going to take 7zip.json, and then it's going to do the other ones. Now, the important thing is SSM documents are designed to be idempotent, means you can run them multiple times and you get the same state. So even though I'm running Chrome again, it's just going to say it's installed and continue on. So I'm just going to run this document now, and you should have it build the uh, 7zip into the workspace. So I'm going to go SSM build. It's going to uh, get the activation code out of secrets, connect to the SSM document, create the SSM document, run it. And that's 7zip.log. It's going to generate the log. We'll look at the log at the end. It's done. It's already done. It's going through the other documents. They're idempotent, so they're just going to succeed because they've already installed. Okay, so the documents have all run. So let's look at the logs. We've got 7zip.log. And that was in part of the document, downloading, installing. It downloads it from the internet, installs it with silently. And then if we look at, uh, just say, MPP log, which is a notepad plus, it says it's already installed or it went, it's installed. And uh, everything's been run again. And now if we go to the workspace, so let me bring up the workspace. And I'd go to control panel. Say uninstall program. Oh, look at that. We now have 7-zip. So if installed it, it's all ready to go. So you, I imagine the way you would do this in practice is you be in the state where you're developing your uh, SSM documents, debugging them, getting them just quite right. And at that point, you bundle it all up, run the build, and it will run the build, create the image at the end, and then you can destroy. And once you've destroyed that, you you have the artifacts preserved and you can go use them in other, you know, could share with other accounts, other Active Directories. It's not tied to Active Directory. So this is sort of the, the, the way you would interactively develop your SSM documents for deployment. So that's pretty much it for what we're going to show. Um, you can install, you have to be careful because there's some things like sometimes antivirus you can't install like this, but most things you can't install them on EC2s as well. But that's part of the build process where it's going to um, do a unit test on the workspace. So if you've done anything wrong, you'll know it'll error out. It'll error out after 45 minutes, maybe, but it, it will error out. Um, but at the end of the day, you should have a repeatable process. Yes, it takes 60 to 90 minutes, but it's repeatable. It's, it's you know, you could put it into uh, pipelines uh, in GitHub and you, you should be good to go. All right, at this point, what we want to do is be a good stewards of our cloud account. I'm going to log out of here and I'm going to go to our account and let's run um, destroy.sh destroy it is much quicker it's like 20 minutes 